joined by former Foreign Secretary Kaval Sibyl and the former Petroleum Secretary Saurabh Chandra. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Ambassador Sibyl, let me ask you uh, for your assessment of what we've seen the U.S. say. Michael Pompeo during a press conference a short while ago talking about these temporary allotments that have been provided, basis specific circumstances, China, India, Italy, Greece, Japan, Taiwan, Turkey, South Korea, getting these temporary allotments. But it doesn't give us any clarity on the timeline for this waiver. But given this first step, what do you make? Well, I think uh, they have uh, done what they needed to do uh, in the immediate so as not to rock the relationship, uh, especially with India. Hmm. But the fact that uh, countries like China, with whom they are now locked in a trade war, hmm. and countries like Turkey, with whom they have very serious uh, issues and problems, have also been included in the uh, exemption list, it shows that uh, there is no special um, favor done to India or that India has been singled out as a mm. country with which the United States has a, a developing strategic partnership and mm -hmm. relationship therefore needs to be protected from uh, such uh, uh, political shocks. Okay. Uh, number one. Number two, I think it's also uh, the two other things. One, that uh, they know a country like China would defy mm. in any case. Mm. Uh, uh, the sanctions and therefore the United States would be compelled uh, to sanction China and uh, make the relationship uh, more difficult to handle still. So they have followed an easy way out of also excluding uh, China. Okay. Uh, with regard to Japan, I can understand why they're doing it because Japan is heavily dependent and mm. it's an ally. And so is the case with Taiwan. Um, Italy is uh, going through a very rough patch, as you know, economically. Yes. And therefore, they are trying to shield Italy from this. Mm. But they have not spared Europe. Yes. Uh, and they are going to target their special purpose vehicle, he says. Uh, and uh, um, therefore, the, the pressure mm. on allies and uh, partners uh, like India will continue. And yeah. if they're going ahead and also to sanction SWIFT and everything else means mm. that uh, at some stage, within six months, India will be <laughs> confronted with a very difficult choice. Yes. But you can only hope that within those six months, some kind of a biomedia, some kind of a solution would be found mm. uh, with uh, Iran, uh, which would uh, prevent uh, the whole situation from becoming far more difficult uh, for, for us to handle. And I will end by saying that uh, it is absolutely wrong what America is doing. Mm. The, the, after all, Iran has done no harm to us. Yes. And, in, and, and if the real reason why, or one of the principal reasons why Iran is being targeted is mm. because it is a great supporter of terrorism. Mm. But here is Pakistan, yes. which, which is the fount of terrorism mm. in the region and especially against us. Yeah. But against Pakistan, the United States is not willing to even do one hundredth of the kind mm. of sanctions that they are imposing on Iran. Right. Therefore, to expect us to be on their side against uh, Iran's involvement in terrorism and do mm. nothing mm. really substantial with regard to Pakistan's involvement yeah. in terrorism against us. Uh, it does not is neither logical nor politically reasonable, right. uh, nor really a policy that they should uh, pursue in their own interests and in the interests of India. U.S. relations. Okay, let me also bring in uh, the former Petroleum Secretary Saurabh Chandra. Mr. Chandra, uh, to Ambassador Sibyl's point, if some via media uh, being found over the next six months, there's been a lot of talk on the possibility of a rupee mechanism being put in place. Uh, and it's very, very clear, Michael Pompeo saying that each of these countries will have to further reduce the dependence on Iranian oil. Uh, you know, the challenge that this throws up now for India. Well, to start with, it creates uncertainty. Hmm. Uncertainty in the world of oil. Markets abhor uncertainty. True. Because speculators will step in hmm. and they are going to have a field day. And the sentiment is negative, so the portents are not very good. Hmm. Substitute barrels may perhaps be found, but we'll have to pay more. Right. Asian premium is one factor hmm. and there'll be more stringent hmm. credit terms hmm. now the unknowns are the face of face reduction yeah what will be the payment mechanism right there is some talk of an of the money going into an escrow account hmm. and being used only to pay for food and medicine hmm. 
So all that needs to be seen in the future. Right. But it does add to uncertainty. Mm -hmm. The larger question is, what does an unstable and desperate Iran mm. mean for this region? Mm. In West Asia, what will happen where the bulk of the exportable production of crude oil comes from? Right. And a lot of it is transported through the states of Hormuz. Mm. So will it be driven to do something there? Yeah. How will that trade be affected? Now, these things are something which need to be considered. Right. And we have to work out some mechanism mm. in case something materializes. Well, uh, lots of unanswered questions, but you're absolutely right. The uncertainty is now back as far as the oil markets are concerned. Uh, they're talking about uh, uh, a $2.5 billion revenue hit already. That's what he said in his uh, statement. More than a million barrels of crude per day has been taken off the market, says Michael Pompeo, and it's already starting to reflect in the price. Ambassador Sibyl and Mr. Chandra, we'll, of course, reconnect with you uh, uh, through the course of the next few weeks as this story plays itself out. But for tonight, with your first reaction, Appreciate you joining us on CNBC TV 18.